Hey everyone and welcome to this Flutter course. In this video, we're going to show you how you can actually install Flutter and we are going to talk about it through some couple slides and at the end, we are going to be building a very nice interactive onboarding screens. So before you proceed, do make sure you hit the like button and also the subscribe button. So Flutter is a Google UI toolkit that you can actually use to build beautiful natively compiled application. And it supports cross-platform both on Android and iOS and also on Windows. And you can also use just a single code base to build this application. So you could see over there we have build Android and iOS apps using a single code base. So with the help of that programming language, which is client optimized and is very fast, very fast performance on any platform, that's what we're going to be using on Flutter. And it's a programming language optimized for building user interfaces. So when we talk about user interfaces, we're actually making reference to the widget, which you're going to see in some couple of slides. And it's very productive with the help of hot load or static analytics. Static analytics, which kind of helps you to build less buggy codes. And it's very similar to JavaScript. And if you're familiar with for loop and also the Java uh, structure, you could see that Flutter looks similar to that. We are still going to see that as we proceed. So with the help of widget, we can actually use that widget to build the natively uh, beautiful UI application. So we have the material. We also have the stateless and stateful widget. We then at the bottom there, you could see we have the scaffold, app bar, container, image, and icon. These are all example of widgets. And the next one is supposed to be the stateful widget. Okay, the stateless widget. So the stateless widget is just an immutable widget, which we can actually tamper with. And uh, you can see that inside there, we have a container widget, uh, which we use to render application, but we are still going to see uh, what a stateful widget is. Stateful widget is dynamic and it changes immediately you save, even immediately you are using it on your Android app or on your iOS application. So we have examples of it like the checkbox, the radio slider, the form and text field. So if you want to use Flutter on your machine, make sure you have the latest S code or iOS emulator. And if you're on Windows, make sure you have the Android Studio SDK and also the emulator. And then in your S code or in your Android Studio, make sure you have the Android Studio plugin. Or if you are going to be using the VS code, which we are going to be using on this video, you need to make sure as well you have the Flutter VS code extension. And finally, let's get started. So once more before you proceed, do make sure you hit that like button and also the subscribe button. And this is just the example of the application that we are going to be building. And it's just a simple onboarding screen with an image and also a button and some couple of text. And if you can notice here, we also apply some colors on the button, which we are actually going to do. And also secondly, we are also going to build this to also help us understand more of how we can actually use Flutter. So by the time we are done with these two application or these two onboarding screen application, you should be perfect building a simple basic Flutter application. And as time goes on, we are going to go into diverse animation and also diverse advanced programming aspects of Flutter. So guys, before you proceed once more, do make sure you hit the like button and also the subscribe button. So in this tutorial, let's go ahead and install our Flutter application or Flutter SDK on our machine. And this tutorial is not only targeted for Windows, although that I have a tutorial I put down on the link description that you can actually click on. It's going to take you to a page on a website that you can actually learn how to install Flutter on your iOS device. So we are going to be focusing mainly on a Windows machine in this aspect. So let's just click on documentations. Or quickly, let me just go ahead and open that as well. So we have to just go over to both skills and down here you could see flutter installation and step so all you just have to do simply is to uh, come over to this link i'm going to put it in the description you're going to see how we do it so for the benefit of simplicity i think it's best that we just follow the one on the website although that the one also on the documentation looks very easier but anyways let's just click on get started and when you click on get started, you can select the platform which you want your Flutter to be installed. Then you can select Windows. So for Windows operating system, you just have to go ahead and download the SDK. So I already have the SDK downloaded. So I have it extracted on my local C drive, SROC folder, and I extracted the SDK over there. 
Then the next thing you have to do is to add that folder project to your path. So over here, you can see update your path, but on this tutorial here, I just made it simply add paths for location or for your flutter. So this is going to be your fl a flutter location. You are going to add this path. So if you're on Windows, just search environment variables. And when you click on edit environment variables, come over to path and click on edit. So I didn't notice that earlier, but you could see here we have the C directory, source directory, flutter, and also the bin directory. So simply, if you want to check whether your flutter has been added perfectly, you're just going to run this command from your uh, bash. So when you run, when you run which flutter, it's going to show you where your flutter is actually is on your directories. So that's it. And that uh, you can also run Flutter Doctor to have some couple of things installed. But uh, if you're on iOS, just go ahead and download the Xcode, configure the Xcode with the code below. And also if uh, for Windows, go ahead and install your Android Studio. Then inside your Android Studio, you just have to create a virtual device, just like this one you could see over here. And then inside your VS Code, you just have to simply install the Flutter plugin. And lastly, you can just run Flutter Create which is actually going to create the application just with the app name. So that's it for the installation. Very simple. And that's similar to what they just put down here. So once you add this to your path, you can run which flutter that or which flutter, which is going to show you where your flutter is. And just like that, you can run flutter.tor. And uh, if you wish to do some other things, like I said, you can install Android Studio and install a plugin and set up your AVD manager or virtual device simulator and that's it so let's just uh, get started with so to create a flutter application is just very simple all you just have to do is to stay on the folder which you wish your folder to be or your folder application should be so you just simply have to run flutter then you put down the create command and then you type down the name of the application so we are going to call the first one on button one and when we hit enter, it's going to grab everything for us and have it installed for us in that directory. So once that is done, you just have to switch down to onboard one. And uh, I would have told you to run uh, this command with, with the help of this command, we can be able to run our application. But I think the best part of it is to open it on our Visual Studio code and run it directly from there. So when you come over to your Visual Studio code, once it's open, Click on this section over here and search for Flutter. So when you search for Flutter, you could see the Flutter extension. Just go ahead and install it and that's it. And then come back to this folder. So you can open the lib folder and you could see the main that file. So in the main that file is exactly where our application is. So we can just quickly use the debugger over here to run our application. But let's kind of uh, take a look at what we are seeing over here. So right here, you could see we have a stateless widget, a stateless widget which renders once and does not allow for uh, re rendering or does not allow for changing things dynamically. So we have just a simple title inside the material app widget. And also here we have a theme data which you can actually use to uh, set your primary swatch colors. And with the help of Flutter, we can assess over millions of colors. So we have colors dot let's say red so when i click on red you could see a lot of colors that it affords me to select so when i select any of this one so i could say red 900 you could see it's going to be applied to that and also once you have that flutter extension installed you could see it's going to be recommending those colors for you just like emmet or beautified plugin so we have here just a simple uh, a stateful widget which we can actually use to pass things dynamically so over here we are passing just a simple uh, title to our home page so that's it over there so a lot of uh, uh, a lot of this let's just go ahead and run our application and when we run our application we just have to give it some couple of times and it's going to open that application on our virtual device right now the application has started and you could see we have flutter demo home page over there and when you click on this button, because of the stateful widget, we are able to update this dynamically. So we are still going to come to that aspect. 
So this is going to be the first time you're going to be uh, seeing this if you're new to Flutter. And what you see here is just a stateless widget and it's going to be supporting a uh, material app. So material app kind of wraps every other thing that we want to do because basically Flutter is kind of based on that material UI. So uh, for the basic of, uh, for the, for the purpose of simplicity, we just want everything to be uh, started from scratch. But before we move ahead, I just want to make a reference to these colors. So Flutter kind of supports a lot of colors. So you can actually change this to red. And when you change that and save, it's going to change this as well to red. So which is kind of looking very cool. But uh, let's just go ahead and make sure we get rid of everything here. So just go ahead and clear this and make sure you get rid of every other thing there. So you can just clear this comment as well. And also clear this one. So uh, for the primary swatch, we don't actually need this because we are going to be uh, using our, uh, sorry, we are going to be doing colors by ourselves. And the visual density kind of make uh, things to be more adapt adaptive whenever you are on different platform or different mobile screens. So we just don't need the theme data. You can still get rid of that. And you can change this to your uh, first Flutter app if you want. So let's just go ahead and change this to Flare first Flutter app. And then inside this home is where we are going to be putting every other thing that we want. So if I just uh, come here and put down the text widget, so I can say hello world. And when I save that, you could see we have the hello world text over there, which kind of looks really cool and is very, very fast. So if you want to put more things like, uh, let's say we can add a container over here and inside that container, we can have a chart and inside that chart, we can have the column and inside this column, if we want to put down multiple containers, we can bring down the children and inside the array, we can just say text. So we can say text one, and also you can just put comma over there and uh, you could say text two. So when you go ahead and save that, you see we have the text one and text two. So why you see it on, on a vertical axis is because we're using Coulomb and you can also change this to row if you wish. It's going to be on a horizontal direction. So that's how we can actually uh, change things in the way you want it to be. So if you want to change something like this text color over here, you can just simply type down style and then you can bring down the text style. And inside that text style, you can just give it a font size, let's say of 100. So you could say 100.0. And when you save that, you see the text side of that first one kind of get more bigger. So let me just get rid of the second one and make sure that this is Coulomb as well. So you see we have that text one. And if you want to give it a color as well, so you could say color and you can refer to colors. Then you can select the one you want. So let's just select any color over there. So let's say colors.blue. And when we save, you see we have colors.blue. So that's how we can do that. So gradually you're beginning to understand how you can actually uh, use a flutter. So there's one more thing also called a uh, scaffold widget. So if you want to make use of this scaffold widget, instead of us using that Coulomb widget, it's very simple. You can just type down scaffold and there you can just reference to the app bar. And for the app bar, you just have to use the app bar widget. And inside the app bar widget, you can see the title. Then you can put title, which is my first floater app. And now we are kind of having some errors. So make sure you uh, kind of delete this and also remove this comma the last and you can just close that properly. And when we save, you could see we have that about title over there. And if we want anything to show in this home over here or in this body, it's very simple. All you just have to do is come beneath the upper inside that same scaffold. You can just reference the body and you can just put everything in the center if you wish. Then you can put a chart and that chart can be either a column or row. So let's just use a simple text. We could say my first body. So when we save this, you see we have that my first body over there. 
So Flutter kind of have similarities with JavaScript. So if you don't want this this way, just very simple. You can just uh, make it in a way as if it's an ESC syntax. So you can just simply say run app. And inside that, you can put the name of the class you want to run. So make sure you close that properly and add a invited command at the end. And it simply is going to render the same thing to us. So that's it for just a basic introduction of Flutter. And right now, let's go ahead and start working on our application. So if you notice here, our application kind of have some couple of images, both the first one and also the second onboarding screens. And simply for you to use an image, it's very simple. Just come over to this popspec.yaml file. So in this popspec.yaml file is where you can actually use your dependency, uh, put the description of your application, and as well change the name of your application. So we are going to change this to a very nice name. I can just simply say onboarding app. So just go ahead and save that. And whenever you save it, it's going to apply that to your application. So we are not actually working on this, but I just want to show you how we can use images and also custom fonts. So in case you have any dependency you want to use, you can just go over to pop. Uh, let me kind of show you that quickly. So when you come over to pop.dev, so this way you're going to be grabbing a lot of packages, just like node modules packages. So you can make a selection of the uh, pop.dev that you can actually, sorry, make a selection of dependency you want to use. So the, the basic ones are always English words. So when you select English words and click on search, you're going to see that's English words over there. So when you scroll down over here, it's going to give you some direction of how you can actually install that. All you just simply have to do is to import this one on your main.dat file. But to use the dependency, uh, you have to think, click on installing. And in, on inside the live installing, you can just go ahead and copy this and come over here and just go back and paste that. So that's how you can use a custom dependency on your Flutter application. So when you scroll down here, you're going to see some comments made here. We have the fonts. So if you want to use a custom font, all you just have to do is to uncomment this. Then you can add the name of the font and also put down the font and make sure it's going to be coming from a directory called fonts. If you have a directory called fonts, but if you're using a custom directory, you just have to put that the name of that font. But we are still going to come over to these ones as time goes on. So if you want to use images, they are very simple, which we are going to be doing right away. You can just come over here and select uh, uncomment the ad sets. And when you comment on commander ad sets, you can come over here and put down the name of the image from the image directory. But we are not going to be only using one image. We are going to be using multiple images. So all you just have to do is to change this or get rid of this one and just leave it that way, images. So if you want to use the images folder, you can just use it, but I prefer using the ad sets folder. And quickly just go ahead and create a folder called ad sets. So inside here, we are going to be grabbing every single image from this application and we are going to add that, then we can, then, then we can add the image to application from the Flutter codes. So right here, you could see inside that asset folder, I kind of grabbed every single image that I need and put it down and I also added a font and hopefully we should be able to touch the font aspect. So right here, you've seen that we've added that and let's just go ahead and add, uh, use some couple of fonts as well. Since we've uh, actually done, we are actually done with this image. And one more thing, do not forget to put a forward slash at the end of this ad set in order to get rid of that yellow squiggly line. And here we are going to be using a font and we are going to have a font family of Montserrat. So let me just kind of check whether we do have that font. So we, are, we don't have Montserrat, but let's say we are using Leto. And here you can make uh, the selection of the font you want to use under that font family. So we have ad sets. So here, all you just have to simply do is to add ad sets slash fonts. So if you can recall here, we have ad sets slash fonts, then the name of the file or the name of the font itself. So we have the little black dot ttf. So you can also add something like a font weight, which is simply, you can just add the weight over here. 
and you can just say let's add a weight of 700 so let's just leave this one font for now we are going to still make use of that and let's still go back to our application so right here i'm just uh, back in our application and let's start a simple design first then we are going to see how we can apply all those images as we code along quickly and back inside your main dot file you just have to like uh, create a file called on body one inside the lib folder so let's just go ahead and create on body one dot that so inside of on body one make sure you import from the package we have the flutter uh make sure you spell everything correctly and then we can refer to the material dot that so when you are done everything should be uh, uh set for you but why we still see that red uh, sorry that blue which uh, squiggly line is because we are not yet using any widget so quickly just type down a class called on body one and we're going to be extending that to stateless widgets because that's going to be a first renderer and then we can override so inside this override we just have to override the widget called the build and then we can put down the build context context and then inside here we can add whatever we want to add so do not forget we initially used something like a scaffold so this is the perfect time for us to use that and inside that you can add a body and that body can be text or anything so let's just go ahead and add a text and let's call this one onboarding one and let's go ahead and save that so using this is very simple back inside that main dot that file uh, you have to just simply come here come to this body and kind of remove everything here at the center and simply you can just uh, type the name of the function or the name of the class and close that properly and when you save it's going to render that on body one for you so when you uh, when you're done with that in case you did experience some errors just come over here and make sure you properly put an invited code there and you could see that it's going to show that on body one so that's how we can use a class of another file and use it inside our main body scaffold file so right now let's go ahead and start our designing and that's going to be the first part of this video so guys if you've come this far do not forget to hit that like button and also that subscribe button so we are not going to be making use of this uh my first flutter app title over there so uh, simply all i just have to do is to get rid of that title so that we can have a simple screen which we are going to be working with and uh sorry guys not exactly this title i mean this app bar so just go ahead and get rid of it and you could see we have just a very nice flat screen over there so this is kind of touching the the edge of that status bar and we don't actually want it that way so inside this our onboarding one so let me kind of uh, reduce this a little bit inside this onboarding one all you just simply have to do is to put that that same scaffold the text and inside this body we are going to put something called a safe area and inside this safe area we're going to have a chart and the chart is going to have a column because everything is on a vertical axis so do not forget always that a column does have children and then we can put multiple things here so let's say text one and also we can also put another text over here so whenever we save you see we have that escaped from the status bar and also placed it properly for us so right now let's start off our first design so inside here we are going to have a container and inside that container we are going to have a padding because we don't want it to touch the edges of our screen and we could say const of edge insights dot uh, if, we, if we want it to not touch the parts of our screen we can use all if we want the top right left and bottom but if we want from some specific side we could say dot only as well then we can make some selection like top then we can put a number like 20 so let me kind of add something here so that you could understand what i mean so let me just say text so let me say padded text 
So when I say top of 20, you could see over there, it gave us a top of 20. When I say a left of 20 as well, so uh, it's supposed to show us a left of 20. So let me kind of make things uh, organized. So that was supposed to be just one. And when we save, you see it still gives us that padded left of 20. So that's how we can use it. But we, we can actually use this or we can also use from left to right. So we have left, right, uh, bottom, left, top, bottom, right and bottom. So you can actually from here then put the numbers respectively. So we are going to be using 24.4, 42.0. 24.4 and also 42.0 so that's how we can add that and automatically you see it's going to give us that padding from each edge of that screen and inside here we are going to have a row and inside that row we are going to have uh, a children and inside that children we are going to have an image so we can actually use image.adset then we can put the name of the folder we want to use, then we can say bug.png, which is the name of the image. So when we, whenever we type the name of the image correctly, if you notice here at, the, at this uh, little uh, something like a minimap or the left pane, you could see that image. So this is one way of using images with Flutter. But if you want to still use the image in another way, you can just wrap everything. You can just say something like this image. Then inside there, you can put down the image from the ad set image. Then you can put ad set slash back dot PNG. So whichever one you want to use, just go ahead and use it. But for simplicity's sake, I think when we use image dot ad set, I think that would be the best. Then we can, we can use ad set slash back dot PNG. So that would be the best we can actually use over there. So inside this row, uh, one more thing we have to do is to add something called text or the text with there. Sorry for that guys. So the text over here, we can add that word called skip. So let's see if you see we have, we have it over there, but it's kind of joined together and let's go over and style it. So we have the main axis alignment the main axis alignment is just like applying a CSS class of, of uh, the horizontal axis. So we could say the main axis alignment dot space between. So whenever we save this, it's going to space it out. You could see we have that back over here and also we have that skip over there. So that's how we can use the row to bring things down. So right now, let's go ahead and add the image part. And beneath that, we are going to add the container. So make sure you type things properly. So inside this container, we just have to open that parentheses. And uh, first of all, we have to give it a margin. So this margin, we are going to use the edge inset dot only. So we have the left of 20.0, the right of 20.0 and the top of 34.0. Then you just have to add a comma and beneath that, we're going to add uh, some constraints. So whenever we want to give something like a fixed height and also a fixed width, we use constraints. So with the help of boss constraints, we can just expand or we can make some selections here. You could see loose, tight, lab, tight for uh, finite finite but for now let's just focus on expand so with expand we can reference the height and also we can reference the width but we are not going to be uh, dealing with width right now so let's just use the height and we just want something like a height of 300 or let's say 300 uh, pixels so you just have to say 300.0 and we also can give a width or we can also give it uh, with the uh, boss constraint but for now let's still focus on this one so we can actually give a fixed width or if we want it to, uh, to be more responsive, we can use something called media query. So we use the media query of context dot size. Then we can specify the width. Then uh, what we're actually doing here is we want to, we want to take a very nice width size 
of each device screen only 65% of that screen size. So you just have to add 0 0.65. And if you're familiar with React Native, you will see that we mostly use uh, a figure, then we multiply it by a decimal value, and it's going to take that percentage to actually fit that to that specified uh, width and height. So this is kind of uh, the same thing, but here we are just using media query because we want it to be uh, responsive on each devices that the app is going to be run on. Then we can now add some decoration. So we can also use the boss decoration here. And inside our boss decoration, we can now add an image as a background image. So you could say decoration image. So over here, you can now select image. Then you can use the ad set image. Ad set of that's PNG. Then we can use fit to box fit. So if you're familiar with CSS, we can use cover or contain and also react native. So let's go ahead and save that and see what, what we have. So right now you could see we have the girl picture here. So I kind of use this image in another way. We've already seen how we can actually use image in a straightforward way. So this also another step you can actually use to use image as, an, as a background or also use image in your Flutter application. So that's it. So the next one now is to add uh, the text beneath this image. So you just have to come over here and put a comma once more, then type down a container. So inside that, we also have to give it a margin. So we are using only. So this time around, we are so this time around, we are going to use only top of 20.0. Then with the width as well, we can use a media query width dot of the context. So sorry guys, my machine is kind of laggy. Then we can use the size dot width. Then we can multiply with just 0.60% uh, of the screen size. Then for here, we can give it a child. Remember that in a container, we can have multiple children. So instead of us to use uh, a, let's say we want to have multiple children, we can just use a child. Then inside that child, we can add a column or a row. Then we can list out the children inside that column. But for this one, we are going to just use something called fitted, fitted box. So fitted box is more like a container, but it's just like uh, fitting, uh, fitting something like a text, like let's say something like that wraps a particular size. So we just want something that should just uh, fit, that fit height. So we don't want it to expand unnecessarily. Then we can give it a child of text. So for this text over here, uh, let's just kind of apply some couple of styles as well. So don't forget that before you apply a style, you have to add the text so we can say visible changes in three weeks. So this text over here is exactly what we saw uh, from the demo application. So if you check in the demo application here, you could see visible in three weeks. So that's exactly the same thing that we just added. So simply, if you want to add a text style, don't forget to add a style and then you can select the text style so let me kind of break this down. You can say style, text style. And inside that text style, we can just uh, reference the font size and we can just say 38.0 pixels. And it's going to just select exactly that font size. So if I happen to change this to 12 uh, uh, pixels, it's still going to reduce that. Uh, it's, it's kind of not responsive, but but anyways, we've already seen how we can actually do that. But I don't know why we are not able to actually change the text size. Then beneath this container as well, we can add another container. So we want to add the child of button. So we can use a button. We can actually use the button here, but uh, because we have, we are going to have something like a ripple effect, something like a ripple effect in a button, 
something like a material button so we have to use the raised button so when we check in the demo application you could see that kind of uh, cool ripple effect so if we want the same thing in our application it's, it's very simple for us to do we can just bring down the raised button so make sure you type things correctly and inside that we can give it a shape so we want the edges to be rounded so we just have to use rounded rounded rectangle border then inside there we can give it a border reduce of border reduce border reduce dot circular of 18.0 so that's how we can add a border reduce to that. So we can also give it a padding of edge incise dot only. So we just have to make a selection of top of 15 and also a bottom of 15. So if you wish to add a uh, 0 there, there is nothing bad. But if you, if you wish to leave it that way, same thing. Then for the child itself, we can add a text of get my plan. So let's just make this look uh, nice. If we uh, want something like uh, the text to be uppercase, just put dots here. You are going to see more recommendation from Visual Studio Code of uh, some things that you can apply to a text. So we have trim right. Uh, we also have trim all matches, uh, maybe for regular expression, but we are not going to that right now. What we want to actually do right now is just to select to uppercase. So make sure you close the parentheses. Then we can add a style. So don't forget. For you to add a style, you must use the text style. So we want a font size. You can actually use a font family, but we want a font size of 14. So for the font family, I think we are using little. So I can just say little. So let's save. And you can see we have that our font size applied and also uh, we have our button looking very ugly, but at least it's a button. So let's kind of uh, make things look very easier for us or very nicer for us. So if you if you notice here, we have this uh, yellow squiggly line kind of showing us there are some things that we've not yet added in our button. So right now, let's just go ahead and add those things. So whenever you use a raise button, you must add an unpressed. So you must add that. So when we add that, you see that yellow squiggly line gets away and also we can add a color so for the color uh it's kind of somehow but we are still going to see how we can actually do it. we can actually use colors.red so let, let's just use a simple color there as a background color then for the test color itself we can actually use colors.white so let's save so everything is kind of uh, looking nice and let's give it a margin. So at the top there, okay, I think, okay. At the top before the child, you have to select the margin and use the edge inserts as well, that's only. And I guess you should know that we just need the top. So you can use 40.0. So you see it's properly spaced and it's kind of looking more like a button right now. So, and we also have to add so we also have to add something called padding so there in the padding we can use the edge instead as well dot only we have the top of 15 and also the bottom of 15.0 so close this to look nice uh why is it not spaced out it's supposed to space out and i guess you must have uh, noticed that we are actually applying this to the container and not to the button here. So for us to fix that, it's also very simple. You can just come over here and add a top. I think we already have a top. Let's say a left of 15.0 and also a right of 15.0. So you make sure you close everything to look uh, very nice. And you just go ahead and save. And you can see we have our button space. And when we click on it, it kind of looks more like a real button right now right now so we want this color this red background color to get out we want to use something similar to that so uh, 
for some reason, I don't know why I kind of uh, wanted to find a way we can actually do this, but there is a way we can just quickly do that. We are going to create a method called uh, colors from hex. So let me just add that quickly. So just follow along. So we can just specify the color we want to add if you want to use hex values. So we can use 75, db, and 4. So if we want to create a method called colored from hex, just go ahead and you can copy this or you can just come beneath this uh, uh, method over here, this build uh, widget. So since it's going to return a color, you can just you can just say color from hex and definitely you know we are going to be passing a string of hex color. So it's kind of looking more like uh, Kotlin or Java. So right here we have colors from hex and because we are not yet returning anything, we, we can see that uh, bluish squiggly line. So we can just define a file, final hex color code of hex color dot replace all. So we want to replace hash with MC space and then we can return a color. Then we have to pass that color so uh, with the help of flutter you you do it this way then you use a dollar sign use a dollar sign of x code then then you put a radix of 16 so i don't know why it is like that but trust me it works so when we save we are supposed to see that uh, color working fine and uh think we we are not getting something here and that's because we are using the wrong radix so we use 16 so 16 should definitely solve that and right now you could see we can use that function to apply background colors or use hex value colors in flutter so that's one way you can use hex value colors in flutter so we are done with that so the next one, the next one we are going to be adding is a text. So I think let's kind of check in our demo app. So we have the sign in text and beneath this comma, then you can bring down another container. Then you have a margin of edge and size dot only. You can select the top of 20, a child of text. We have sign in, then we have a style. So this style, we have just have to break this down, put the text style of color. So with the help of our function colors from hex, we can just use any hex value color there. So we are using 73, 7, C, A, and 4. Uh, we also have to put a font size. So we have a font size of 18.0 and a font family of little. So make sure you properly place everything, properly place everything and put comma where necessary. So when we save that, finally, when our application refreshes, you could see we have that text over there, signing text. So your own challenge is going to be adding a custom font to this one and also adding a, a custom font family to this one. So both of these, just go ahead and do that. So we are done with the first part of this tutorial. In the second part, we are just going to start with the second onboarding screen, which is not actually going to take much time. So before you proceed further, do make sure you hit that like button 